This video is made possible by our loyal Patreon supporters. Visit patreon.com. Today we're going to work on back strengthening and twists. Did you know that back, lower back pain specifically is the world's leading cause of disability? According to American Chiropractic Association, it's estimated that as much as 80% of the world's population will be dealing with back issues at some point in their lives. That's why it's so important for us to be proactive in order to minimize the amount of suffering that we may encounter later on in life. And that's basically the purpose of yoga. So let's go ahead and get started in a child's pose. So go ahead and grab some blocks if you have them handy or any props you, you may want to use. It's all optional today. And as you're ready, you can bring your knees out as wide as your mat, bringing the toes together, sliding your fingertips towards the top of the mat and your forehead gently towards the ground. And we're just going to, as always, begin with checking in with our body and just noticing how we're feeling today. Beginning with the physical body, notice if you feel any aches or pains anywhere, any soreness or tenderness. Without trying to change anything. And then gradually turn your attention to your breath and your heartbeat. Just getting a baseline. Noticing the quality of your breath. Notice how you're breathing. Is it through the mouth or through the nose? Are you breathing equally through both nostrils or do you feel congested maybe? Maybe you're only breathing out from one side. And then slowly bring your attention to the quality of your thoughts. Notice how life has been going for you lately. Notice if there is a connection between how life has been and how you're breathing. Sometimes we don't realize when we're under some stress, sometimes our breath is constricted. Now let's slowly begin deepening our breath. I'm going to be here for another five cycles of breath. Nice and slow, in and out through the nose, taking four or five seconds as you inhale through the nose. Pausing at the top, and then slowly exhaling back out through the nose, constricting your throat, and then pausing at the bottom. This is called the Ujjayi breath, a deep diaphragmatic breath. This type of breathing during our yoga practice especially helps us warm our body up. It helps us stay present and focused. And it helps us go a little bit deeper into our poses without injury. Let's do two more. Deep inhale. Complete exhale. Let it be audible as you breathe out through the nose. One more cycle. Inhale. And complete exhale. All right, as you're ready, go ahead and come onto your hands and knees. Stacking your wrists under your shoulders, fingers nice and wide, index fingers parallel to the sides of the mat, and your knees are stacked under the hips. Lengthen the spine, reaching forward through the top of your head all the way back through the bottom of your tailbone. And let's go ahead and inhale the tailbone up, slowly curve the spine, lifting the crown of the head. Exhale into your cat pose. Let's do four more cycles, your own variation of cat and cow, following your own breath. Hopefully, now that we're on day 12, you're pretty familiar and you don't need a lot of cueing. You can drop right into your cat and cow, adding a little sway if you'd like, side to side, or maybe even pushing back into a child's pose as you exhale. Cat and cow is a wonderful warm up for the spine. Flexing the spine in both directions and when you add a little sway, it adds even more 
flexion side to side. A great way to warm the back up before we practice. And then go ahead and come onto the belly from here. So we're just going to walk the knees back, come onto the belly, bring your forehead to the ground, and then keep your palms alongside the ribs. Keep hugging the elbows in towards the body. Push your toenails into the ground so much your kneecaps lift up. And then as you inhale, lift your heart up. Keep your gaze down and then lengthen the back of the neck and really push your toenails firmly into the ground. Keep doing this as you lift up. Keep hugging those elbows in. And then with an exhale, slowly come back down. So that's baby cobra. Again, a great way to strengthen the back. You can, we're gonna do this a couple more times. Either you can continue doing baby cobra or you can go ahead and try locust pose. Make sure that you've done a couple rounds of baby cobra before going into locust. So for locust, we can just extend the arms back, palms down. And this time we're gonna inhale and lift the heart up, but we're also going to lift the legs and the arms. So try to reach your whole body up towards the ceiling as much as you can, like you're Superman or Superwoman, like you're flying. You can even keep your arms forward if you'd like and really reach and lift and lift. And as you're ready, exhale, slowly back down. Just a couple of breaths here. Now, if those first two poses felt pretty good to you and your back is pretty um, happy right now, you can try a bow pose. If you were struggling, then I can encourage you to continue with your baby uh, cobra or your locust pose. To try bow pose, you can bend your knees and then reach back and grab the backs of your ankles. And then as you're ready, we're gonna inhale to lift back up just like we did in locust pose. We're gonna reach our whole body towards the ceiling. Our toes are reaching towards the ceiling. Our heart is lifting and our feet are pushing into our hands to open up the shoulders. So keep lifting. And as you're ready, slowly exhale back down and release. Make sure you release gently. Don't slingshot your legs back down. Now that's a pretty intense pose, so do it with caution. And if you are still having back issues, then I encourage you to do some more baby cobra and locust before you try your bow pose. As you're ready, tuck your toes under, push your palms into the ground, and then inhale up to a plank and then exhale into downward facing dog. All right, once you're in your downward facing dog, take a few deep breaths here, pedal your feet out and let your body settle into the pose. And gently drawing your chest towards your thighs, your heels towards the ground, keeping the weight out of the wrist, pushing down through the base knuckles of your fingers and your neck is long here. Your shoulders are pulling away from the ears. One more cycle of breath. Deep inhale and complete exhale. With an inhale, come to your tippy toes and tiptoe all the way to the top of the mat into a forward fold. Hanging loose and heavy here. You can grab opposite elbows. You can gently sway side to side. Make sure you don't lock your knees out. Nod your head yes, shake it no if it feels good. With an inhale, bring your hands to your shins and lift up halfway, lengthening the spine, shoulders pull back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise all the way to stand. Arms sweep up, palms touch overhead. Exhale, lower palms in front of your heart for Tadasana. Three full cycles of breath here. Continue pushing down through all four corners of your feet to make sure that your feet are about hip distance or shoulder distance apart. Don't lock your knees out, pull the belly in towards the spine. Your shoulders draw down. The top of the head is reaching towards the ceiling. One more cycle of breath. Inhale, sweep the arms up, grab your left wrist and then pull up towards the ceiling. Exhale, lean right. Make sure you're stepping evenly through both feet, pressing into the ground. Turn your heart open. Inhale, back to center, switch your grip, pull up. Exhale, lean left once again, pressing evenly through both feet, pressing into the ground. Inhale, back up, maybe a little back bend if you'd like. 
as you exhale swan dive and fold inhale for your half lift lengthen the spine exhale to fold plant your hands step your feet back you can lower your knees to the ground if you'd like otherwise you can keep your knees up with an exhale lower down for your chaturanga all the way down for your baby cobra or just back halfway down for your upward facing dog and then exhale into downward facing dog we're just going to do one round of our sun a if you'd like to do a couple more rounds to warm up a little more feel free to pause the video and just do a couple more on your own a few deep breaths here and then as you're ready once again walk your feet back to the top of the mat into your forward fold let's inhale for a half lift to lengthen the spine exhale fold bend your knees deeply bring your chest to your thighs with an inhale both arms rise for chair pose when you look down make sure you still see your toes and then sink your hips a little deeper pull belly in lift up through the heart make sure your neck is still long here your shoulders are down away from the ears and your palms either face each other or the back of the room one more inhale and then with an exhale bring your hands together in front of your heart we're gonna twist to the right and then at the same time put all of the weight into your right foot and then slowly reach your left foot to the back of the mat that requires a lot of core strength but right now we're also twisting and working the back here one more inhale and then as you exhale drop your left hand to the ground and inhale the right arm up dragonfly twist make sure your your right knee isn't splaying out you want the knee right above the ankle reach towards the ceiling one more inhale and then exhale plant your left foot on the ground and then bring your right elbow to the right knee sweep the left arm overhead for extended side angle <clears throat> Keep the neck long. Once again, don't dump your ear, your neck into your shoulder and turn your heart. Really reach, stretch out the left side. One more inhale and then exhale. Bring both hands down. You can either take a vinyasa here if you'd like or you can step your foot right back up. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Vinyasas are great because they keep our heartbeat up and they keep our uh, body strong all of those chaturangas really work our arms inhale back to your chair but if it's any time if it's too much for you too much for your shoulders you can always skip the vinyasa always know that you can modify the yoga practice to your needs one more inhale as you exhale hands together we're twisting to the left this time and then again, we're going to put all of the weight into the left foot. And then as lightly as we can, really pull your core in. Use your core to step your right foot to the back of the mat. One more inhale. And with an exhale, drop your right hand to the ground. Inhale your left arm up, dragonfly twist. Pushing away from the ground, reaching up towards the ceiling. Twisting through the ribs. One more inhale. And then exhale, plant your right foot, bring your left elbow to the knee, inhale, the right arm overhead, extended side angle. Keeping your neck long, all of your muscles are active and engaged, equal distribution of energy. Finding length from the fingertip all the way down to the right heel. One more inhale, exhale, Bring your hands to the ground. You can take your vinyasa here if you'd like. Otherwise, step your foot forward. Inhale, half lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands and step your feet back. Let's go ahead and just take a vinyasa for good measure. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just a few breaths here to reset. 
We're kind of jumping into it. We're working hard. Our heart is probably beating fast. I, at least I know mine is. Hopefully yours is too. All right, as you're ready, let's inhale the right leg up. And with the exhale, we're just going to step our foot through. It's okay if you can't get it in one sweep. Get it there however you can. Plant your back foot. Turn it in about 45 degrees. And we're going to inhale both arms up for warrior one. Bring your hands to your hips for a moment. Pull the right hip back and the left hip forward slightly to really center your hips. And then inhale the arms up. You can adjust your footing if you need to, if you need to spread your feet a little east and west and or bring your feet closer together, whatever feels more comfortable or uh, accommodating in your body. <clears throat> Keep pulling belly in, energetically reach towards the ceiling. Let's take one more inhale. And then with the exhale, we're gonna sweep the hands behind us and interlace. Press your palms together and your fists are gonna reach down towards the ceiling as you inhale and lift your heart up. Exhale, slowly fold forward. Bring the right shoulder inside of the right knee. Keep pressing the palms together and lift your fist towards the ceiling now. Humble warrior. You can nod your head yes, shake it no. Keep breathing. One more inhale. With the exhale, release your hands to the ground. And when we're going to straighten out both legs. You may want to grab a block here if you're still working on flexibility. Whatever height you prefer, plant your hand on the block and then inhale the right arm up. If you don't have a block handy, you can even place your hand on your shin. If you need to be a little higher, that's totally fine. We're just twisting, still working hard here, but just try to keep your legs straight if you're able to. One more deep breath in, and then exhale back down. <clears throat> We're going to bring our block over to the side. If you had a block handy, just put it to the side, and we're just going to bring the left knee outside of the right foot, and then plant the hips. Coming into half Lord of the Fishes, a nice twist here. So both hips planted. Inhale to lengthen spine and reach the arms up. As you exhale, we're going to twist to the right. So either you can hook your left elbow outside of the right knee, if you can get it there. Otherwise, you can just wrap your arm around your right knee. And your right hand will plant behind you. Three cycles of breath here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist and look back. Again, you want to really coax yourself into the stretch, letting go of the resistance, but you don't want to be forceful. So it's like an art almost to try to figure that, that sweet spot where you know you can go a little bit more, but you don't want to injure yourself. And then slowly exhale and unwind. Maybe a little counter twist feels good for you here. And then we're just gonna plant our hands, step our feet back. Let's go ahead, take a vinyasa. Remember, you can skip it if you'd like. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale for your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> Couple of cycles of breath here. We're gonna repeat this on the other side. And then remember, anytime you need to take a break, please do. You can go into child's pose, grab water, towel off, you can hit pause. Video's not gonna go anywhere, don't worry. Take care of yourself. As you're ready, inhale the left leg up. With an exhale, once again, we step through. We're gonna plant the back foot, lunge deeply into the left knee. Inhale to rise. We're gonna bring our hands to our hips just for a moment to pull the left hip back slightly and the right hip forward. Adjust your feet if you need to. Spread them out a little bit. Take your time getting into the pose. And then as you're ready, pull belly in. Inhale, lift the arms up, warrior one couple of cycles of breath here. Nice deep lunge. Try to get as deep as you're able to again. I invite you to challenge yourself. The more you're willing to challenge yourself, the quicker you're going to see a change in your body. It's not like it's a race. So 
so it's okay if it takes you a little bit longer as long as you're not giving up that's all that matters deep breath in with the exhale we're going to sweep the hands behind us take the opposite grip this time whatever pinky was on top the other one will be on top this time push your palms together and inhale your heart up reach your fist towards the ground as you exhale humble warrior fold forward keep pressing palms together and lift your fists towards the ceiling you can nod your head yes and shake it no keep breathing make sure you don't hold your breath and then as you're ready release your hands again you can grab that block if you'd like hop the back foot in just a little bit so you can straighten out your legs and then we're going to plant the right hand and inhale the left arm up for a revolved triangle pose. Keep twisting through the ribs. Try to keep your legs straight and breathe. One more inhale. And then exhale, bringing your hands down. Place your block to the side. And we're going to bring the right knee outside the left foot this time and have a seat. Make sure both hips are planted on the ground. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, twist. Left hand plants behind you. And then three cycles of breath. Inhaling to lengthen the spine. Exhaling to twist. And then as you're ready, slowly unwind. Maybe take a counter twist in the opposite direction and then bringing your hands back in front option for a vinyasa or you can push into your downward facing dog take a couple more cycles of breath here and then whenever you're ready bring your knees back down to the ground all right we're going to transitioning transition to some cooling poses now some yin poses <clears throat> doesn't necessarily mean it's easier but the energy is different it's going to bring the energy down and it still may be challenging because we hold a little bit longer so bring your legs out straight in front of you and then with an inhale lengthen the spine lift the arms with an exhale fold forward So traditionally with yin poses you want to be here if you remember we ta we talked about this in one of our previous videos you want to be here between three to five minutes to truly get the benefits of yin but even if you can only stay here for five or ten breaths it's still very beneficial so you're working on letting go of your back you're really working on flexibility here but it is going to be a little bit more passive it's not forceful with each exhale, see if you can let go of a little more resistance in the body. So when we do a lot of strengthening poses, we want to make sure we allow the body to relax and cool down and maybe even stretch to counter all of those tight muscles you don't want to be walking around with really really tight muscles because again that can further add to or aggravate injury so you want to find that balance slowly rise up as you're ready and then come down to your back and keep your feet planted and walk your heels a little bit closer to your glutes your feet are about hip distance or shoulder distance apart your arms are gonna be alongside the body and your fingertips are close enough to graze the backs of your heels. And then with an inhale, we're gonna push our feet into the ground and slowly lift our hips up. As you do this, walk your shoulder blades closer together on the ground. And then lift up a little bit higher. Keep pushing your feet into the ground and breathe. You want to squeeze your glutes here, squeeze your shoulder blades together. As you're ready, you can slowly release. And take a couple of deep breaths to reset. And then as you're ready, once again, let's inhale to lift up to our bridge pose. 
This is really working all of our core muscles, which includes some of our back muscles. When we think of core, oftentimes people think of our abdominal muscles, or a six pack. Slowly exhale back down as you're ready. But our core muscles actually wrap around into our back. So for instance, if you do crunches, you wanna push your lower back into the ground and really engage all the core muscles to protect your back. All right, from here, let's go ahead and just bring our arms out to a T. And then scoot your hips a little bit to the right. And then you can let your knees fall over to the left. If you want a little more sensation or intensity here, you can cross your right leg over your left. If that doesn't feel good and you wanna go back, you can always come back to your knees being stacked. And then if it feels okay in your neck, you can turn your head over your right shoulder just take five deep breaths here. Even as you're here, notice what's going on in your body if you're clenching anywhere. See if you can find a little more softness. Let go of the tension and the resistance with your exhales, letting go a little more. And then also notice what's going on with your thoughts. If you find yourself distracted, thinking about the past or the future, See if you can gently bring your attention back to this present moment, back to your breath. And then as you're ready, slowly come back to center. And we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. You can shift your hips a little bit to the left. Lift your legs up and let them fall over to the right side. If you wanted to cross your legs, you can take that crossing, bring your left leg over the right otherwise keep your knees stacked and then you can turn your head over your left shoulder if it feels okay in your neck and even though this is about back strengthening and twists it is still important to remember that this is yoga and there is an aspect of mindfulness and awareness as I said, when we can be proactive and take preventative measures to reduce the amount of suffering we experience in the future, we realize the way that we live, the way we carry our body, the way we use our muscles, all of that makes a difference. And it either can make our life more difficult or it can make our life a little bit easier. As you're ready, slowly come back to center. Feel free to move your body in any way that feels good to you. If you want to take a happy baby, you can bring your legs up, keep your knees bent, soles to the ceiling, and then grab your feet and slowly draw your knees down towards the ground. You can gently rock side to side, pressing your lower back into the ground, breathing, releasing the back. And then as you're ready, you can gently bring your toes to the corners of your mat. Let your arms rest alongside your body. And if you'd like to grab a pillow or a blanket or anything to make yourself more comfortable, if you feel uncomfortable, then please feel free to take a moment to do that. Grab what you need. And then as you're ready, let go of everything. Let go of the tension, let go of the resistance. Let your eyes roll to the back of your head. Let your tongue come away from the roof of your mouth. Feel your body heavy, melting towards the ground. And take rest in Shavasana. And as always, I encourage you to stay here for five to 10 minutes if you're able to. That would be ideal. I know sometimes we don't have time, but do what you can. Pause the video and take as long as you'd like. And then once you are ready, you can gently start bringing movement back into the body, deepening the breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes slowly. And 
then as you inhale, you can reach your arms overhead, point your toes, get as long as you can. And with an exhale, bend your knees, draw your thighs in towards your chest, wrap your arms around your legs, give yourself a big hug, and gently sway side to side until you find yourself to the left or right side of your body. Using your arm as a pillow under your head, just take a moment to engage your senses and become aware of your surroundings. Notice a moment of peace and quiet in your day. And then perhaps see if you can carry that inside of you, coming back to it whenever life gets a little chaotic on the outside. Slowly push yourself back up to your seated cross-legged position. And then bring your hands together in front of your heart. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste. Many of our subscribers don't see our videos. Make sure that you click the notification bell. Introducing Yoga Plus, offering a free series every month with over 300 different videos. Take control of your health. Work out anytime, anywhere. Yoga Plus. Download now for free.